about the drama between T-Pain and Usher? No. There's some tea. Give me the tea. Between the I'm old... Thirsty. Yeah, I was gonna say, what the hell? They're so, like, old I was gonna say rappers, but is there music rap? Usher or... No. Well, Usher's R&B. What is T-Pain? Like, pop? I would assume so. Yeah, I think he's pop. Pop, yeah. Well, here's what happened. He was on this documentary called Pop that came out on Hulu, and he talked about how one time he was at a party with Usher, and he thought Usher was his, like, real close friend. He really Mm -hmm. liked the dude. Mm -hmm. So Usher comes up to him and goes, man, you've just ruined music. (laughs) <laughs> and we just told him that when was this like a long time ago yeah years ago and he's just coming out with the tea now yeah he's just said it and he said that that started a five-year depression for him at that moment because he looked up to usher as an idol and usher was basically like you fucked up all of music damn yeah oh, damn. An asshole i know i was like usher why, why did, did you say spicy, that my friend honestly that's a really annoying thing to say too because like what does that mean to fuck up music music is like ever expanding there's right? room there's always room for more music and it's, it's like so an true. art if you don't like that type of music doesn't mean they're bad musicians yeah or bad artists yeah they're josh and i this weekend we're watching um a performance by a car I don't know if I'm or fake cure. I was trying to get it right all weekend. He's French, but he's he's kind of got Odessa vibes. Oh, he is yeah. So I've, fucking talented. So Josh and I, I sat exactly through like a about. whole hour concert. It's on YouTube. I'll link it below and just showing what he does. And it was it was in this like gorgeous scenery, too. It was so like beautiful. But I had such a new appreciation for that type of music after seeing someone like really making it and sitting that long and seeing each stroke like. I mean, the dude's like a modern composer. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah, 100%. And then there's people that think that EDM and electric music ruined music. The same thing with, that's like what Usher is saying to T-Pain is, I think it changed, you ruined it by auto-tune. I think it changed music, but like that, I don't think it changed it in a bad way. Like I love Odessa and that, t- and I have no exact, I don't know, I can't pronounce that person's name, but fake I know. Here. I, yeah, fake. Or, I, don't I know. was Googling him like a few weeks ago, actually reading about him. He's great. Yeah, he's extremely Super. talented. His music beautiful. But I mean, I think there's something to be said like for appreciation of other types of music because like mm-hmm. you can make music with like beatboxers make music with just their mouths. I right. think that's music. Right. Have you seen some beatboxers on TikTok? Oh, yeah. It's insane. It's so I'm amazing. I'm like, dude, you literally sound like a full fucking like not I band. Know. I don't know. I guess like EDM, like artists yeah. with like actual auto tune and shit, but you're making it with your it's mouth. It's so like layered and complex still. Yeah. yeah. So I know I music know. is so open for interpretation and forever changing. I mean, mm-hmm. think about the music they were listening to the in the Renaissance. Totally. They probably hear all of our shit now and think it's trash. They probably hear Elvis and think right. it's trash and the Beatles and, you know, all the other famous musicians we've had over the years. And people are always hesitant towards change in music, mm-hmm. right? Like, remember... I'm, uh, we both took that cool history of rock and roll class. Oh yeah, I loved that class at UNC. That was lit. That was it a really was a fun great class. class. You took it in person though, right? Yeah, that was probably way I would better. Show high. <laughs> That's like the best I mean, way to no, enjoy music. Show. Oh, so. it was the best thing. I was like, just we would listen to all different music from start to finish, like mm-hmm. from the very beginning of who created music, and then up, up until what we listen to nowadays, and yeah. it was really really interesting and a lot of the resistance along the way that new types of music new styles like change makers in the industry have made Mm -hmm. i just thought that was such a shitty thing for usher to say fuck you usher this week damn i'm not saying i'm i actually love usher i mean i'm like i was a fan i was a fan of usher but like fuck you specifically for that not fuck you in general but But like fuck fuck that that statement because that is mean like why would you ever walk up to someone and say something like that i agree so Pretty rude. Lame. And honestly, I've seen T-Pain live a few years ago oh, and he brought you, out a piano. You saw T-Pain had, live? I did at the Summer Jam or whatever the oh, fuck it was called. Oh, you went to Summer Jam? Oh, I used to go to Summer Jam all the time. Like it was so fun. Like five Summer Jam. Oh, dude, right off of like at Fiddler's Green, <laughs> yeah. Greenwood Village. It was <laughs> lit over there. Oh my God, that's And amazing. T-Pain did like a few of his regular songs, did his auto-tune, but then he got out his piano and he had a beautiful voice. Like I was mm. absolutely stunned by him. Seriously, Damn. he's very talented. What the fuck, Usher? Yeah, Usher, <laughs> douche of the day, Usher. <laughs> Hi, friends, and welcome back to the sesh. I am Kendall Ray, and I am Janelle. I feel like every single week is the same. I'm Kendall Ray, and I am Janelle. <laughs> yeah, well, that's our intro. I know. I guess that's true. That's what people fucking do on podcasts. They need to know who we are because 
not everyone knows who we are. Not everyone. They can just stumble across it. That's I stumble true. across podcasts all the time and I appreciate when they say their name. Honestly, names. that's a very good point because half the time they just go in and I'm like, wait, who the fuck are you? Or if they have like a guest, I'm like, wait, who is this? I'm so confused what's going on. Yeah, I do too. Well, welcome back, you guys. We're very happy to have you here on yes, the sesh. Yes, we are. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well out there in the world. It's a little crazy. Things are getting... Mm. I feel a little bit more yeah. normal, but well, maybe our new normal is just crazy. Maybe because it's like it's been crazy now for a year and a half, and That's we're just true. like, oh, it's crazy. it's crazy, it's crazy, it's so crazy. That's the world is crazy. So true. Yes, the world is fucking crazy. Yeah, everything is like hot as fuck where it shouldn't be. Like yeah. Washington's a hundred and oh my god, yeah. So what that, in the hell is that? I know. Then I think ugh, there's some place in Canada. John was telling me that it was literally just as hot in like. I want to say like Ottawa. No, I don't know. Like people in Canada are going to make fun of me. I thought it was Ottawa, <laughs> maybe not Alberta, something like that. I don't know. But anyways, it was as hot in Phoenix as it was there. What? I was like, what in the fuck? It's insane. I didn't know Canada could go like to past 70 degrees or 80 degrees. I know. It's just, and then that and just like the constant news cycle of madness. Madness. You know, it's Dude. like super exhausting. <laughs> the news cycle. That's Sometimes why I was trying like to stay on the plug. I used yeah. to be obsessed with the news. Like obsessed. So are you. Oh, yeah. yeah I we had a major watch, news obsession. Yeah. We used to watch like the news like it was our fucking jobs. It was really bad. That was kind of like a dark time. When I, I was watching the news way too damn much. Like as soon as I woke up, as soon as I, woke I was up, on all day. And then I was, when like, I went addicted to bed. addicted to it. And all the channels, I always like wanted to know what everyone was doing. Yeah, same. And now I like never turn it on. No. After the pandemic started, I kind of never went back. Mm -mm, became I never too much on. at that point. I agree. 2020 was just too much. Too fucking too much. Too damn much. I'd rather be on TikTok. Yeah, we got to like remind ourselves constantly that like hopefully, wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who fucking knows, right? But hopefully things are getting better. Yeah, it seems like it. Except for the Delta variant that's flying around, apparently. Um, and I keep yeah. getting mixed information of whether or not the vaccine I can't actually follow helps. All that. I, it's True. too much for my anxiety. <laughs> I, I have know. like enough going on. And, you know, sometimes you just got to get perspective and like <laughs> take a step back. True. You know what I mean? That, honestly. But, anyways, we wanted to bring back a little segment called How Are You? Mm, how are you? How are you doing, Kendall? Oh, me? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually doing really good this week. Which is nice because I feel like the last couple episodes I've been really anxious. Mm -hmm. Not during them, but yeah. just in my in life. life. Yeah, for sure. And kind of like going through a little depression session. <laughs> oh my God, that rhymes. What if we had merch that says <laughs> Sorry, that was a dark Oh my gosh. That was the we are not one. making merch that says that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like it's... It's like we said before, mental health is this is not this linear thing. No. And I definitely had a dip there mm -hmm. in June and just felt super overwhelmed and anxious all the time. Yeah. And having trouble getting my heart under control, my just heart rate, my blood pressure was really up and I couldn't really figure out exactly why. Mm. But I really took some time this weekend to kind of take care of myself and completely unplug from work for the most part. I mean, me and Corelli still send some things back and forth. You know, we got to <laughs> still keep things rolling, but it was nice to have, well, actually, it was kind of nice that on Thursday was the night that we all, all went out. Oh, yeah. Last episode. Oh, yeah, we, it was a week ago. Yeah, we had our yeah. big g and it, and it was wild. wild. <laughs> it wow. actually ended up it being really wild, fun. It was so fun. We went out to dinner. We yeah. went to a speakeasy. Mm -hmm. What was that place called? Miller's and Rossi. Oh, it's in good Rhino. fucking drinks. If any of you are from here. Yeah, it's really good. It's Super too good, good drinks. They have good too food good too. Drinks. We didn't eat, but it was, yeah, they've got bomb we drinks. We got smashed at that place. I mean, fun. and I, I kept finishing Sydney's shots throughout the night. Did you notice? I, I had like three of your shots because you didn't like the, yeah. me and Crowley really like pickle shots. Oh, I loved the pickle. So yeah, got two rounds of those and Sydney was like, nah. So I did hers. <laughs> Delicious. And that Yeah, drink. I don't really like pickle shots. I just can't. Really? But you love pickles. But I love eating pickles. pickles. What the I hell? know. I don't yeah, know. Every it's time you come over, you're like, where's your pickles? You know, you just had pickles. 20 minutes ago. I know. I just don't want to drink the juice. The but, juice. But it really helps part, balance out the vodka for some reason. It like, yeah, cuts you it like out. them too. Oh, They're I love good. pickle shots. Oh, mm, delicious. Oh, pickle amazing. shots are the best. So fucking good. And then I had the rest of your tequila at the restaurant too. So I realized I yeah. had like a couple other shots. <laughs> she was not that down for that either. Because I, wow. It was really fun. Yeah. And then we ended up, so it's right next to this bar called Tracks. This club. What, yeah, it's, a, it's like an LGBTQ plus club. 
and it was so fun we were like remember we were just sitting over there kept checking the line because the line was really long yeah, and we were like we're not getting in we're not getting in we're not getting in we're not gonna wait in the line whatever and then it was like an hour before it closed and the line was no longer aligned so we're like oh fuck it we should just go like, well, right next first to we went over there and they were like no you can't get in <laughs> some lady and then she walked away and we were like oh damn we got <laughs> sad we're like guess <laughs> right. the night's over time to call an uber <laughs> yeah, and then like, okay. some angel came out of the club and was like you guys can still get in sign yeah. these waivers yes. and last call hasn't even happened yet yeah i know we were like fuck hell out. yeah it was so fun it was so we got in it was so much fun in there oh my god oh my it gosh. was like the funnest i've had in a long time and like dancing i can't even tell you how how happy it made me to like dance again with like me like loud music like ah oh, with like the drinks flowing oh, you know what i, I mean know. like yeah oh my god it was so fun it was it was just such great vibes in there and and yeah it felt yeah and it was cool because it was like the end of pride like kicking yeah. off like pride week here like, in denver and stuff so much fun so much energy it was and really fun. yeah i was i remember i got like it was my first time going into something like that in so long like it yeah. was all of Same. our first time right so i felt all nervous at first because i have a little social anxiety and yeah. crowds really do it for me you know yeah. So I was like going into there and I was like, oh, my heart was going pit to pot to And I was getting a little freaked out. And then this guy just walked by me and like grabbed my hand and looked in my eyes and was like, you're beautiful. And at first I thought he didn't, I was like, what? So I was like, what? And he's like, you are beautiful. And I was like, and then he like let go of my hand. And I was like, don't stay. And then I felt amazing. That's what you oh, needed. It, I, it's what I needed. He was like, like, he he was like oh, this queen it is over like here he sensed needs. It. I was like, was I just oozing anxiety? <laughs> like he was like, that bitch needs a little pick me up. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. Oh. It was. And it just goes to show you like, I want to be that person in the club that goes up to someone right? random and says, you're beautiful or whatever. Like changed your whole and night. It, it really did. Like a, a smile goes a long way. It guys. honestly is so cheesy when they're like, it doesn't cost anything to like be nice to someone. But, but it's, it's so, so true. So true. Like it makes still you makes me feel good a week later talking about it because so it was just awesome. so it was so genuine and i could tell his energy was so true Aww. and yeah shout out to that dude don't know Hell your name but that yeah. was fun shout out really great time but then yeah <laughs> i left my uber or <laughs> wow <laughs> i left my phone in the uber on the way home because we were just talking about how much fun we had no, i didn't it, even oh, look yeah, at right, it right, right 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 um so I didn't even realize it until I got home because we were talking corelli's boyfriend picked us up yeah and i was talking to him the whole way home didn't even notice i didn't have it yeah I'm, su I'm surprised we, i'm surprised you didn't notice that that like that night I but know. then again i don't even remember driving home like not i didn't drive home yeah, adam drove us home but like I don't you don't remember like, it not really Damn, oh girl, girl you, you seemed yeah. really sober i remember really? thinking like Curly's way more sober than me oh no i was pretty fucked up <laughs> dude that's the part where like everyone's really drunk but then you convince yourself like you're the shithead of the group and everyone else is like sober and bored of you or whatever but meanwhile yes. everyone is fucked up too and you're like okay. that's what i felt like in the car we were talking about water world then the next morning because i was going on and on about water <laughs> world which we is were, this we were like the storm ride and the mummy <laughs> ride <laughs> and then i was like i want to take my kids on the dinosaur ride one day <laughs> and i'm sure adam was like what the fuck they've talked about water world for like 20 minutes and then i got all self-conscious about it the next day i was like i seem like a really big water world <laughs> <laughs> we never went to water world by the way it never happened. you never went yeah no. okay well we all need to because it's Dude. super fucking fun i love that place can there. you just rent years. out water world for the company yeah sure <laughs> for the company <laughs> let me see the, the budget there. that <laughs> would be, be so fuck. cool we someone should have their wedding there <laughs> now that's a fucking idea <laughs> when you have a budget you know how much is it we'll Dude. give them a call it can't be that bad and water world's world. not that it's, it's not water. like it's disney world right it's water world what the hell yeah mm, i agree i love that fucking place we oh so many there. good memories there Oops, yeah i was obsessed with that place but yeah, yeah our gno was a big success you guys yeah except for i lost my phone well, the uber didn't realize it until like 12 the next day <laughs> um i was like oh shit like i didn't even have it the night before and it didn't even bother me i was like i was thinking about i was like how did she like <laughs> fall asleep without it but it's i okay, don't know because i have my ipad so sometimes i'm like yeah 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 it's, yeah. Fine. it's fine but yeah then i um did any of you guys throw up who threw up uh the next morning i got a little pukey but that happens to me a lot so it wasn't really anything new mm -hmm. but no i pretty much just went to bed that's I nice. was able to wash my face, take my contacts out. I was so fucking proud of myself. Oh, I like good. woke up. I literally woke up and was like, "What the hell?" And like felt my eye for the contact. I was like, "No contact, thank God." Oh, I got home. I good for you. I, 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 you can keep this in if you want. I got home and I stripped naked and I got into bed and that was it. That was the oh, end. Oh, that's of it. iconic. Yeah. Nice. You just went right down. Oh, wait, also, you were like the hero of the night, wearing oh. like actual heels. Like yeah, you were wearing Birkenstocks no. and he was wearing like yeah, we wore little sandals. Birkenstocks to the club. <laughs> Was that such a Denver thing? Like, ever, I was looking around, everyone was like wearing shit like that. Yeah, your like, feet got you fucked up though. We're killing it. Dude, my feet were 
fucked up. Like, I, they're, they're fine. Like, the, the next couple of days, they were fine. But, like, the first day, it hurt Ugh. to walk. I couldn't even, like, I was, like, literally, like, walking with Dude, my toes up. The pictures uh, of the blisters you sent looked so, so fucking painful. Bad. Yeah. But you were it's, badass it's been, you hot. it's been a while. It's been a few years, if not, like, three years since I've worn heels that big. Damn. Sydney, you weren't, you, like, went right back at it and was having fun at home, eating pickles till the late, like, 4 a.m., you oh, said? Oh, yeah, didn't you shower oh, yeah. twice? Yeah. yeah. I, oh. <laughs> She's like, You're I showered twice. I didn't realize it until, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Um, yeah, I, I honestly was eating pickles. I probably ate all the pickles and I was like bored because Jared was sleeping and it was like 3 a.m. So I like got in the shower and then I got out and then I don't know. I like forgot that I got in. So then I got back in the shower and then I was in the shower the second time and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my second time in here. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's the funniest shit I've ever heard. I came home and seriously just passed out. Like I well, I got my makeup off, but then I put on like an acid of like exfoliator. Like, Let's start on your skincare. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, really gonna do my skincare routine. Full thing. But then I forgot moisturizer and your skin oh, is really not no. is not down for that. No. You know, the acid and then the no moisture. It's like, so hello, oh, water. I got so many zits. I went I got a facial yesterday and she was like, Wow, like your face looks kinda Dude. Oh my yeah, God. it was crazy. I had hella extractions being done. And she was like the alcohol and then the the sugary drinks. Oh. I think that's what it is too, because we drank all these we were kind of wild with our choices, right? Pickle shots and yeah, we started off with this doing tequilers at the Mexican restaurant. We, we had like shots of that. tequila. Remember we had like a mm-hmm. green juice shooter with it, that or like was a good. chaser. I mean, it was yeah, so bomb. That was amazing. Anyways, and then we like moved to vodka and like Hawaiian. I remember I see a little flower in my drink at one point. It was yeah. some good shit, and that makes it way worse. So yeah. around five a.m., I got the spins. Oh, I was laying there and I was, you know, when you're just like, oh, I just don't want oh, yeah. to get you're up like, right now to pee or to throw right up now. or whatever is happening. Happening mm-hmm. to you you're just like no i'm gonna ignore this mm-hmm. just pretend it doesn't but then yeah it wasn't letting me and i was like i'm gonna end up throwing up in the bed if i don't go <laughs> do this right now so i made it i had to like run to the toilet and then i had to pee really bad at the oh, same time no. so i threw up so hard that i peed my fucking pants Damn, guys girl I'm- i literally peed myself God like, bless I couldn't even that on stop here. it. I was so drunk that it just like, <laughs> I couldn't stop. And then I was just laughing. I was just standing alone in the bathroom, just hysterically laughing, thinking if fuck. my friends were here, they would think this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Peeing myself. I didn't even wake up Josh either. He well, didn't hear any a, of it. With peace and love, you have a very weak bladder. I do. <laughs> I do. It's a big problem. Like if I laugh too hard or sneeze too hard, I'll pee. Like I'm gonna be that woman. We were just talking about pelvic meshes and shit. I don't even think they do those anymore. I don't think I'm so. I'm gonna need some help. I I've been trying to do more Kegels, but <laughs> <laughs> after I have kids, I feel like I'm gonna wear a diaper. Like, seriously, I'm gonna drink Kegel ball. All bets are off. Yeah, Kegel balls. Kegel balls. I have the I have a fucking she's like yoga egg right or whatever a yogi <laughs> egg what are they called I don't look know. it up they're called something yogi they're, they're spe- it's like a crystal egg I've tried I tried oh, that for shit. a while crystal egg for your nothing coochie? did nothing for me just wasting my time <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still wasting pain. my energy <laughs> oh my god that's amazing oh I think they're called yoni egg yeah I was gonna say yogi egg is like a yogurt uh, <laughs> egg thing <laughs> okay. like a raisin <laughs> cover a yoni <laughs> egg yeah. um, okay well maybe it's not even that maybe it's not even that <laughs> i'm telling you guys it's a thing yeah well i had a great time i thought it was well worth it and we should do it again oh definitely well worth mm-hmm. it but i it took me a while to recover so basically oh, yeah, my whole weekend was hung over <laughs> I felt like, like it's just still happening on sunday i'm like oh, i'm just still getting over the other night oh my god and then I dude i went to the chiropractor we see the same chiropractor and he was like he did my little scan and was like holy <laughs> you're like he's did like he's like your your digestive system must be off i was like yeah it is yeah. it's really it's wild right now and <laughs> my whole back was like lit up and he gave me the cracks of fucking life oh god sometimes that man really just like <laughs> well he's nope. a special kind of chiro yeah. too because i know some people like judge chiropractors but this guy has a lot of medical training and his thing is his whole his approach is very different yeah it is oh i love him He's helped me a lot. Yanni egg, yo. It's called a yanni egg. A yanni egg? Yeah. All right. Sweet. It says why you shouldn't put one in your vagina, though. Oh, So uh, maybe don't use that. Oh, no. It's been a few years since I've had a yanni egg. Damn. Sounds like Oh, they say, yeah. 
Putting a jade egg in your vagina is not a good plan. Why? <laughs> According to verywellhealth.com. Oh, no. You can hide a lot of things oh, up there. wow. People okay, put all kinds well, of shit up there. I guess don't do that. One time when I was working in an OBGYN office, some lady called and said that she put a mango up there and then it got stuck and she had to come in. What was the reason for the mango implantation? I didn't ask. I was like, all right, isn't it sound my bit? I wasn't like, girl, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, you weren't like, so <laughs> why? why? And I don't know if it was a slice or the whole thing, but there was mango in the coots. And oh. she had to come and get it out. I was not the one to remove it. I have no medical. And it was that degree, far up but. there. Were the whole mango or like I a don't slice? Know. Didn't ask. Just, I just, you just said, know mango was involved. Shit, why don't you come in right fucking now? <laughs> that's like a yeast infection. <laughs> that's that so sounds sugary. like some shit waiting to happen. Ew, people have done weird shit. Remember that like. Some people put like tuna in there. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, this is getting really dark and gross. I say we change it because I'm yeah. feeling nauseous. Okay, anyways. What do we got on our menu oh, for today, God. Janelle? Today, well, I think we need to fucking start it off with Britney updates. Do <sighs> what? Oh my gosh. I'm still so hell. confused about what's going on. And it seems to be changing like every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing very conflicting reports about this latest update mm -hmm. from the judge. So apparently the judge has come out and denied Brittany's case and, and her motion to remove the co-conservator. Well, other, some people are saying, though, that this was an older motion and that um, it's also so that they can reinvestigate yeah, I've heard I don't that think too. that's the end of it. It's not like it's denied and well, that's over. There's more to this. It will remain at least for now was the quote. And so, I mean, that could be weeks. I mean, yeah, I don't it, know. But it said in the articles that I read that there's a they might be reason. doing a bigger investigation. Into I would the hope entire so. Matter. Like, this is ridiculous. I know. I, I really thought, damn, I even said it last week. Like, hopefully this is going to be different this time because of public opinion. But if this really is an old filing, like some people are saying, then maybe, maybe, I don't know. This literally <laughs> just broke. So we don't really know what's going on at this point. I'm yeah, sure exactly. by the time this goes up, someone will know and can explain this a little more clearly. This stuff is very confusing oh, and we yeah. only see bits and pieces of the picture. Here. Right. So it's like trying to piece it all together. Right. That's so true. But Plus, God, it's just been so sad. Well, I just was sad that like, it seemed like, as of now, it's a no. <clears throat> Whether they have like a bigger plan or not, it was just sad that they couldn't even come out and be like, it was really impactful what she said. Like they just, they gave her nothing. They gave like the public nothing. It was mm -hmm. just like a, nope, not right now. As, yeah. But I don't know if it's later. I don't know. But also we have to remember that Jamie is the co-conservator with Bessemer Trust. Right. And this is just the estate. The person that actually has power over her personal decisions is Jody Montgomery. So right. now Jamie's kind of coming in and being like, wait, we should do an investigation because these are serious allegations. And like, I don't know if he's being legit, if he's actually concerned about Brittany and the way she's being treated. My guess is Rob's not, but there's like all the, it's not just Jamie that has his hand in the Brittany. So maybe that's the argument money. is like all these other people. Okay. Which so I don't he's know. kind of trying to make the argument that we need to investigate it, maybe to slow things down or I don't know. Yeah. He just keeps being like, we should investigate the serious allegations regarding forced labor forced medical treatment therapy medical care all that kind of stuff hmm. well there's not much to investigate just listen to her like Ooh. and then look at her schedule I and know. her requirements i know dude it's really sad i feel so bad for her i know but i mean it's not over i hope it's i no, think there's it's still like hope not what we wanted at all i know come on i know and legal it's frustrating legal things take so Forever. that's long. what i'm saying like okay so she worked so hard to be able to speak in front of people mm -hmm. and everything and then so now how long is it going to be till she gets a chance to like keep working on this like another six months Who yeah knows? i mean that's what we don't know it could be like a couple weeks maybe yeah exactly i don't know i hope it's not that long i feel really bad for it, it sucks i know i do too Ugh. i wish i understood it more i wish we could bring on Maybe we should try to bring on a legal expert sometime i would love to do that. i think that'd be a really great episode we yeah. should totally do that yeah, because I just someone. do not understand this uh, oh, absolutely conservatorship not. I world. I think it would add a lot more if, if we could have someone on the show who does understand and <laughs> yeah. can explain it to us and, you know, knows the right questions to ask or mm -hmm. whatever. And, you know. Yeah, but all it has been just incredibly eye-opening this past week. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. God, money really is the root of all evil. Like, yeah, it's, all, it's just so sad how all of this is seems to be over money it makes me mad that like she's paying for 
all the lawyers, all the legal people on She's paying both his legal sides. Fees. That's what I'm saying yeah. on both sides. What the fuck, dude? Mm. That's what's so fucked up. Mm. It's terrible. I just don't understand. Like they could have been like, okay, we're not doing the we're not getting rid of the conservatorship now, but we're gonna make these changes. You no longer need to be fucking taken to the most exposed place in Hollywood for therapy. Like Yeah, it should be like accommodations made in the meantime while right. we make other decisions on the co- exactly. conservatorship. And again, but, I have no idea how legality works. Yeah. I don't even know if you can do that. I don't know either. I don't know. That's why I'm hesitant to speak because right. I just don't know what I'm exactly. saying. I'm like, totally but. speculating, talking about my butt, honestly. But like <laughs> if I had if I was the judge and I could, I would be like, okay. If I can't get rid of the conservatorship at this moment, like at least mm-hmm. let's give her some buffer in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Like let her take out her fucking IUD. Yeah, that's yeah. If you Are didn't you hear us talk me? about that last week, it's disgusting. It really is. That is, I think, the most depressing thing. That yeah, I've ever heard. Oh my god, it is so upsetting. Like talk about. Oh god. And it's like all these fucking jamie this white ass rich dude getting money from her daughter Mm -hmm. basically well i guess not him because he's not or yeah his Mm -hmm. daughter isn't i was gonna say is controlling her medical stuff but i guess that's not true it's it's the montgomery person but still like they're all in the hands you know they all have their hands in the britney pot and they have the power to free her at the end of the day and they're not or just help her like even if they can't necessarily let her completely go or whatever like Mm-hmm. help her make her life not as miserable as it seems to be right yeah, now shouldn't there be i'm assuming there's like steps or different levels of conservatorship yeah, can they I just like move it, slowly move it back down what, isn't, yeah exactly mm-hmm. i don't know they just said for now okay well what does that mean they could have been like until further investigation or until we look at this like and maybe they are behind closed doors i don't know yeah jamie is i guess he's the one that's like asking for like this investigation even though it's like there's so much proof that she's being mistreated and miss she's being like she's mm-hmm. not treated she's not tra- treated like a fucking human mm-hmm. so like i don't I, like in a way i do think it is just kind of like to slow the process but the article did say that he was the one that requested the investigation yeah yeah that's what so, i thought too yeah so i get like from i guess the core is just holding off until they i don't know i because it's so confusing these articles are so contradictory you know what i mean mm-hmm. like every article yeah. I, read, I read says something just a little bit differently yep mm-hmm. so Yep. That's how I, and I mean, I don't think they know either. No. Like they're they just don't. putting shit out there to put shit out there. There's so, no so one really knows. much that we don't know. And right. we see this with true crime all the time. When there's a so, case, when there's barely any information out, people start filling the blanks and that's where it gets kind of dangerous. And I don't want to assume anything mm-hmm. other than what I hear from Brittany, mm-hmm. you know? Right. That's, that's and her point. statement. God, it said it all. It really did. Yeah. They really did. So, yeah, um, we'll just keep so you updated. Sad. I hope that there are more updates to come. Honestly, I hope that we can talk about I think this there in a positive will be. light. This soon. is not going to be over. This fight is going to continue. And yeah. Hopefully progress is being made. Let's just all, you know, send our thoughts and energy towards that situation and just hope that with time. Well, then it makes me yeah. scared. Like how many other females are in this position? So as well? many. Whether so they're many. Hollywood or not. That's I'm the like, scary oh, thing. God. It's like Britney gets the attention. Right. And she deserves it. Right. But there's so many other people, too, who need it really badly. Yeah. And it makes me sad to think about. So, God, I don't know. We'll keep you guys updated if anything else happens, of course. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and take a quick ad break. but We'll be right back in a sec. Guys, this sponsor I'm so excited about because it has to do with a dog product, you guys. This is Natural Dog Company I'm talking about. And if you know me, I am obsessed with my little furry friends. In fact, I think I need to bring Charles up here for this. Yes. He deserves to be up here for he this. He does. Act. Sir Charles, please enter the building, He's enter the stage. He's like, what? Mom, I was having a dream. What were you dreaming about, honey? Who knows? He was dreaming about this is what, what the dog hell? treats and dog products. Oh, were you dreaming about having silky smooth skin from oh, your natural dog yes. company products? He loves it. <laughs> His tongue is out. But anyways, you guys, um, I have three dogs and one of them actually, not this guy, but another one, she's missing her one of her paws. And so the end of her leg gets really dry and mm-hmm. kind of like cracked a lot. But I've always tried to find products that are, you know, natural and aren't toxic to use on her, but it will also keep her little leg moisturized. And Natural Dog Company has really helped. Did you know that 85% of dogs experience skin irritation in the form of hot spots, allergies, or rashes? Did you hear that, Charles? 85%. 
But now there's real relief that really works for all these conditions your dog struggles with. True healing at last. One of the products that I use on all three of my dogs is the skin and coat supplements, and I give them once a day. They seem to love the taste of them. They're like little treats, and I've noticed a big difference in their coat, especially Charlie. He is a more dry coat, but he loves these treats, and with daily use, it's helped be a little more shiny and soft, and his curls are looking better than ever. Natural dog products are made with all natural ingredients and are vet tested, vet approved, and vet recommended. Their plant-based all natural ingredients soothe allergies, heal hot spots, and dry flaky patches of skin, and maintain healthy skin and fur. They've got all different types of products from supplements to skin, paw, and grooming products, everything you need to keep your dog healthy and happy. And of course, they're made from small batches in the United States. No foreign chemicals, toxins, or unknown ingredients. You know you're getting the very best. Now, as a special very limited time offer for my listeners, get 20% off your order from Natural Dog Company. That's right, 20% off your entire order. Just go to naturaldogcompany.com slash sesh to make sure you get your 20% off. Naturaldogcompany.com slash sesh. What does the Charles say one more time? Naturaldogcompany.com slash sesh. Guys, there is truly no better feeling than having smooth legs, especially when you go into bed, mm. you got a nice pair of fresh sheets. They just like slide right through. Yes, especially <laughs> when you have some Athena Club lotion as a little topper for Damn, your legs. there you go. Oh, it's real good. So let me tell you why we love Athena Club and their Athena Club razors. Athena Club razors are designed with built-in skin guards to help prevent razor burn while being gentle on those curves. So no wonder their razor has thousands of five-star reviews. Oh. Their razor blade is also surrounded by a water-activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, which is the holy grail for skincare, as I'm sure most of you know. And the best part is their razor kit is only $9 and comes with two blade heads, a magnetic hook for your shower so you can store it on the wall, and your choice of handle color. Plus, you'll never have to worry about running out of refills because nothing is worse than shaving with a dull razor. It is really bad for your skin. So you can actually choose how often your replacement blades ship to you for free. That means fresh, ready-to-use razors always arrive ready when you need them. And it's really nice that it comes with shave foam so you have everything you need to shave all together. They also have lotion that is really soothing after you shave. I really like their lotion. So show your skin that you care with the Athena Club razor kit. Sign up today and you get 20% off your first order. All you got to do is go to athenaclub.com and use promo code SESH. That's A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B.com with promo code SESH for 20% off. Guys, everyone needs an escape, an escape from reality, an escape from what we're doing right now. But that can be hard to come by. And that is where Dipsy enters the chat. <laughs> Let yourself get lost in a world where good things happen and where your pleasure is the only priority. Spassy. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. Each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people and immersive scenarios so you feel like you're right there. Listen to stories about hooking up with your hometown crush you never made the move on or that coworker you always had a little thing for. Or maybe it's a story that puts you in bed with someone who's telling you exactly what you'd like to hear. With Dipsy, they release new content every week, so there's always more to explore no matter what you're into or what turns you on. They really do have something for everyone. That's something that I think is really cool on this app is there is something for everyone. I'm telling you, I'm confident that you will find something that you like on Dipsy. Also, if you need to wind down or really just focus on relaxation, Dipsy has wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax before you drift off. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. All right, guys, we have some breaking news here breaking on the Breaking fucking news. Put on your wolf blitzer hat. Oh, damn. I need a wolf we are in the blitzer situation. Wig. We are in the situation room. We have a situation. We need <laughs> wigs. I think we should both get wolf blitzer wigs and Holy wear them shit. when and we wolf have blitzer situation glasses? room. Breaking Done. Breaking fucking news. But for real, <gasps> actually, this won't be breaking by the time this goes up. No, but it's but breaking for us, for us right now. Turns out Britney Spears is going to be speaking in front of Congress. Oh my God. Okay. Um. Yeah. So Britney just got, or I don't know if she's seen this yet, obviously, but this is like just posted on Twitter an hour ago. Um. The U.S. or the Congress of the U.S. Obviously, um. They sent Britney a letter saying that she's invited to speak in front of them. Um. 
a bunch of members of Congress signed it. They're just saying that like you've like we see that you've been like severely mistreated um, and like you literally don't know any you don't you don't owe anything to anyone and you deserve to like tell your story. And we've been following this case very, very closely and that they just want her to speak because she's been she's been failed by the by the system is essentially what they're saying. Wow, that's huge. That's wow. See, guys, I knew there Holy would be this shit. is not fucking over. You manifested that right up. Uh, like some good news was coming. I can feel wow. it. Like it's gonna be a bumpy journey. Any fucking fight or war, this is like a war. Seriously. It's bumpy and has ups and downs. And where there's gonna be times where she's met with denial, and there's gonna be times like this where people actually give her a platform and Congress. Pe- Damn, Congressmen yeah, and Congress. women. Matt Gates, Amazing. Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh. Andy Biggs, and okay. Burgess Owens. Okay, you know what? Whoever, yeah, give whoever. her a voice. I don't Anyone. care who signs it. True. That's fucking true on that. This is amazing. Oh my God. The wow. whole letter. I'll put it up on the screen. Wow, you've been mistreated by America's legal system. We want to help you. We've been following your conservatorship. The federal courthouse door was closed to you and to, and to too many Americans. Your story is so powerful and the admiration of your achievements so great. You, and perhaps only you, can blow that door wide open. Give hope to millions. And that's the truth. Please take advantage of the empowerment that public congressional testimony can unlock. You owe nothing to anyone. You deserve to live a life of freedom and to choose your own path. Damn. Many others have used their fame to advance social, political, and criminal justice reform. Yeah, seriously. Like, she's honestly, like, I guess that is a part where she, like, is privileged in the sense of, like, she has a fucking platform. Yeah. Like, she can make some noise here with this. She, well, if she has, if she's given the platform, because... There's clearly rules about what she's allowed to say on her own damn social media. Right. That's very true. Well, it looks like she's going to Congress or at least invited. We'll see if she goes or not. I think Hopefully, she, I bet she will. I hope she like sees it now. Oh, you know she mean? Cause someone will tell her. Um, I hope so. <laughs> the message will get through to her. Yeah. That's 100%. Well, and I mean, I guess if there's some reason she doesn't want to do that, I support that too. But I really hope that she sees that as a good thing. And wow. that is a good thing for her. That is crazy i i feel so much better now seriously I felt so sad earlier someone outside of this fucking court system needs to hear her speak yes yes out of the whole situation yeah. just a completely third party and yeah let's wow damn that is exciting i am honestly shocked congress of any like, any members of congress were like down for that i mean i'm surprised they like Care well, it's enough, like the, guess, the you could say. army behind Britney now. I mean, Britney's army is literally what they call it, but it is so massive at this point, the amount of supporters and then people who aren't even fans of Britney that have seen the pain and trauma that this has caused and how just fucking horrible mm-hmm. it is. She's She really is this show pony that they lock up at the end of the day. Yeah. And even John's dad out. was talking about it the other week. He's like, you hear about Britney Spears? I was like, shit, like really like, yeah. everyone knows about it. Yeah, that's it's fucking impressive. crazy. Proud of him. Go I know, Mark. I know. Go Mark. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, you guys, that's, that's some good news. Huge news. Let's hope it continues. Yeah. I, I don't think this fight is over and I see it. I really hope with my whole being that this will end for her and she can live somewhat of a normal life yeah. for the rest of her time on mm-hmm. earth. I mean, we're we're limited here and to be that's under that type thing. of res- restraints and not be able to live a free life. Mm hmm just heartbreak heartbreaking yeah absolutely god it's really this is crazy i can't believe we just figured that out yeah i'm gonna like cry for her like i feel so like, i know happy for her. Oh, oh, my god. she probably feels so validated being invited there to speak and, yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. yeah and it wasn't just like please come speak it was really a meaningful statement yeah it wow. was oh my well, god that's good go Brittany. go i love it oh yay that makes me happy me too okay what else is on the agenda should we crack into the fucking youtube drama <laughs> Oh, should we crack into that? Should we crack into it? Sure. Sure, we can crack into it. I mean, I mean, damn, it's a lot. I'm not going to like sit here. We're starting from the beginning. Get your fucking notes of everything. Out. The dawn of YouTube. YouTube began on this. Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess the main thing going on this week and it's, we've gotten endless requests to talk about it. We've yeah. had people that want us to do a whole episode on it. And I get it because this has been something that's been going on. If you kind of follow the YouTube community, you've known about a lot of these things for a while. And it's it's very toxic right now. Like Holy I could not even shit. get on the internet or YouTube over the weekend because I, I just was like, I need to just unplug from this. It's so 
fucking toxic. Oh yeah, there's some wild shit happening for sure. Um, which I can't even like keep up to be honest of all of it. I mm-hmm. like don't even Who really can? understand a lot of it. I know I don't either. So I'm gonna take a crack at trying to explain this Gabby Hanna mess that is unfolding on the interwebs because yeah, a lot of you guys have asked us to talk about it. What is there to say? There is so much to say and also so little to say at the same so time. Say. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I don't want to sit here and like go through the entire thing. If you want to learn about it, this is not the place to do it. I just yeah. kind of want to share really our thoughts. I really want her like talk shit about her. Yeah, like, I agree with you. And like pick her apart or anyone else really. I think it's quite unfortunate how personal YouTube drama has really become. I know we've mentioned this before, but... I had a moment this weekend when I was like, God, remember it was about, it was drama over people flipping off Jeffree Star in a picture. And that was like a huge drama get in. <laughs> and the then fuck? Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks was such a big deal. Yeah. And then now we have this kind of shit where it's just like, like literally so heavy series, yep. series of exposing so personal. people. This, this person said this to me and this per- and it's like, Whoa. it feels like so much of it shouldn't be online. No. So <laughs> the plot should not be online. <laughs> if you don't know who Gabby Hanna is, let's see. Gabby started on TikTok. I mean, Vine. no, Vine, right? Yeah, the old TikTok. The precursor to TikTok. <laughs> Vine. Vine was way better. It was. It was lit. It was so funny. Um, so she was, that's kind of where I knew her from, Vine. And she moved to YouTube. She was in the David Dobrik vlog squad for a bit. And she's just had kind of drama after drama over the years. And she kind of decided that it was time, I guess, to put it all out there and she has come out with this series called or something along the lines of confessions of a washed up youtuber something like that yeah that she's gonna like kind of air out all the truth according Explain to her all, and the-, the dirty laundry with everybody just lay it out there yeah and yeah she really like set off a bomb on the internet yeah <laughs> yeah which is interesting because she makes this point a lot to say like i don't start drama i react to it i'm like i know well it's girl. interesting because whether you want to admit it or not, drama seems to follow you everywhere. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? I don't know. I guess you can interpret that as you will. But the whole thing is just really, really bad. I feel like yeah. there's a lot of, um, well, now she's like involved a lot. Of, now there's like random people coming out and making other videos mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. reaction videos and like debunking stuff that she's claimed. And it's well, fucking crazy. You can tell that. I mean, she's trying to, she said, actually, I watched quite a bit of her chapters of her series, as she calls them chapters. And she talks a lot about how YouTube is like her therapy and she feels more free because she doesn't have a time limit. When she goes to see her therapist, she has a time limit. Mm. Yeah. And I understand that, right? Mm-hmm. That, it, it's like, it does get they're like, stressful. okay, so next week. And you're like, fuck, next week already. Yeah, we just got started. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even filled you into the bad <laughs> shit that's going on yet. Um, but yeah, so I kind of get that. And then she's like smoking in it too. Oh, so yeah. that it allows her to like just be real. And <laughs> and I have to be honest, like there were definitely some moments watching it that I really felt for Gabby. And I think any human being can like see someone in pain and crying and and have some type of emotional Response. empathy for yeah. them. That doesn't mean I agree, agree with her. But there are some things that have happened over the years that I do think she was treated wrongly. And like going back to the rice gum thing, that guy, he took her phone at a party and smashed it. And, and then just did some really said some really horrible things about her really taunted her about her body. David Dobrik's crew did that. Yeah. Um, it sounds nose. like she comes from a lot of traumas. Her childhood, growing up, she talks a lot about how she literally mm-hmm. came from like absolute hell, basically, and like has yeah. had to pull herself out of the trenches. Were her words, I believe. Yeah, and she's talked a lot about how she has ADHD, and she's kind of learning about that. And mm-hmm. ADHD <laughs> is not an excuse, though. It is mental sure not. health is not an excuse. It no. can help explain things, right? And that's what I'm trying to keep in mind when watching her is understanding that she is going through her own Mm -hmm. mental illness. And I understand that I have mental illness. I've had an eating disorder. So like I, it's natural to feel some type of sympathy towards someone who is in pain. Um, but that doesn't make the things that she has done over the years. Okay. No. And personally, I don't think I could ever like be a fan of Gabby or 
back her in any way because the things that she did with Jesse and that whole thing was, I think, a real a real show of character. Um, I could not imagine being friendly with someone that sexually assaulted, raped one of my friends. Mm. And if you're not familiar with that situation, that's basically, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Jesse was raped by an ex-boyfriend. And Gabby, I mean, what exactly happened is kind of fuzzy, mm -hmm. but she was still being friendly with him. And that really hurt. And I totally get that because any of my friends, I, I would expect them to never talk to that person again, never associate themselves with them again. And then if they did make a mistake and talk to them, to own up to it and say, sorry, I was being a shitty friend to you because mm -hmm. there's, there is no, she kept saying there's two sides to this story. And well, there's Gabby not and Jesse really good friends. They were very good friends. They were very good friends. And so that was hurtful to her. And now that she's, I just cannot, as much as she's getting all these things out there and, and some of her videos, she made some good points. And I, like I said, I had some empathy for her, but she keeps teasing that she's going to show videos of jesse like crying and this leaked phone call between the two of them i just don't think that's fair because that's not her trauma to like right dole out that's what's like upsetting at least in my opinion i agree it's like dude this is not your fucking trauma to talk about like talking about what you went through your experience of things like mm -hmm. but it's like this is and jesse has made it so clear like please please, please just leave stop. me out of it please she yeah. has she has a kid she's pregnant with another kid right now she she doesn't have the time in her mental capacity to be worrying about this drama and keep having it drug up every few years. Mm -hmm. And then just like, of course, the things that Gabby doesn't address in her series is like the things that she was doing on her discord. That was some whack shit. She was telling minors in her discord that she was oh, going to take a legal action against them and like yeah. threatening them yeah. and oh, all kinds of weird shit. I mean, I could go on and on. I know we don't need to sit here and just talk about Gabby, but Bottom line is, I think the whole thing is very sad, how this is all ending up, how many people it's hurting. Mm -hmm. The latest thing that has come out, Gabby <laughs> talked about Escape the Night. Oh, yeah. <gasps> so <laughs> that <was fucking> crazy, <laughs> dude. That, that was really, then Daniel oh my Joey God, Then Daniel came cringe. out fucking, fucking yeah. <laughs> like armed with receipts. So if basically. you don't know about... Uh, what's it called? I was going to say Back es to the Night. Escape no, the Night. Escape the Night. That was an event we did. Which I've never college. watched even a minute neither i have no, I have idea, no what idea what it is no. <laughs> but it's essentially some show that uh stars a bunch of youtubers and they like kill people off throughout it's like a murder mystery type thing uh, and gabby was cast in it along with a lot of other youtubers including colleen ballinger mm -hmm. and she <laughs> tried to make it sound in her video that she was mistreated on the set forced to wear clothes that were too small working ridiculous hours there was no food she was her eating disorder was triggered and of course, again, I ha always am going to have sympathy for people with eating disorders. Yeah. And you can't say, no, it wasn't like it. Maybe like it, it did. It absolutely could have been. But, but, but is that the responsibility right. of the people around you? So, exactly. Yeah. Joey, who never gets involved in anything, yeah, had surprised. to respond to this and just laid it out so clear. It and, all made so much and, sense. And uh, Daniel, too. Daniel did, too. I haven't watched his. You watched his, huh? Yeah, it was wild. What did he say? He what did he not say? That's the other question. <laughs> uh, he literally, from what I could see from, you know, the text that he was pulling up, whatever, he bent over backwards to accommodate, you know, to the point of going out of his way to Whole Foods to make her like personalized salads and bringing them to her and yep. making them. I mean, it was like, from what I could see, he was really trying. It's not even, it wasn't even his job. He was like the producer and director of a fucking show. You like shouldn't be like, yeah, going out and getting meals for people and whatever. And I guess there were forms sent out days before they yeah. even started for the dietary is, like, restrictions. Yeah. She, she never filled that out supposedly or didn't fill it out till she showed up or didn't show up to her, um, to the two out of the three costume fittings. So they kind of had to guess on what would fit on her body and, um, she says that she was wearing jewelry that like really messed her skin up. But I, you know, Joey comes back and says that they were all sterling silver, the jewelry, and that they totally could have taken it off if like anyone could have if they weren't comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it still is like, you know, you got to take their word for it. You know, I don't know. But from the like, you know, screenshots and shit that I saw I was like, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff let out, like left out of Gabby's explanation. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing around this makes me confused is like, 
why like if you know that what you're saying isn't totally true don't you think that other people have the receipts to back up their point of view I know, and then make stupid. like i wouldn't want to do that at the risk of making myself like a fucking idiot you know I what know. i mean and it made her look like now a total diva right yeah it's just like embarrassing. And then he also, Joey Graceffa pointed out that Colleen Ballinger was pregnant or just, just had, had a Flynn. Yeah, just had, a, I just had her baby. Yeah. And was and breastfeeding on yeah. set. Yeah. <clears throat> and all she was requesting was Coke. <laughs> She's just like, I just need Coke on the set. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, it's, I don't know why she chose to make that one. I don't know either, but and apparently she's just going to keep making more. Yeah. And then now Trish is making things to her and she's making things to Trisha. And it's just That's like, the whole dude, other thing. I'm like, whoa, you guys are actually a lot more similar. Than someone I feel needs like to think. take them all into a room with a therapist and like lock them in there until they figure this out and Honestly, leave us all out I don't of even it. Because this is exhausting. Figured out. I think that they need to get like just agreed to disagree at this point like because yeah. how long i was thinking that like how long are you gonna go back and forth no one's gonna win in this no one's ever gonna go there's nothing that you can there's nothing gabby can say to trisha that's gonna make trisha go oh fuck you're right you're totally right never mind yeah, i'm sorry you were and vice versa whatever. like there's mm -hmm. it's like it's too much water under the bridge so why are you still obsessing over it over and over and over again it's like fucking stop because it's not even becoming about the actual relationship no. and their anger from it it's a it's the public perspective right who can control the narrative to the public and make themselves look the best in this situation? no one's gonna win no one's coming out of this winning at the end of the day no. you all look bad for a different reason and I we just all don't waste understand. our time watching this stupid shit i'm like why did i watch so much of it i don't even know well guess maybe they make money off of it oh they do they do i'm sure gabby's making some I, well we'll see I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how many people are actually watching that because nowadays yeah. you can just watch like recap channels and that's true. Everything else, Definitely like who's actually clips sitting on Twitter. It. I'm like, okay, let me watch. Yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just it's too damn much, and it's it's totally toxic. The internet feels so toxic to me these days to the point where I don't even like getting on Twitter because it's just people fighting and mm. Ethan and Trisha fighting and yeah, Gabby and whatever whoever's fighting and it's just like ugh. Can you guys just call each other like <laughs> i just wonder what this is gonna look like a month from now are you mm -hmm. still gonna be fucking fighting it's like i know dude. and i just don't understand why you if i had been through the trauma that gabby seems to have gotten from the internet and how it traumatized her not saying she's the victim but it, she has felt trauma from being part of the internet mm -hmm. it can be fucking traumatizing yeah, i, was I say, have had trauma yeah, from the internet say, like there have been dark <laughs> times in my life too and I think she even said in her, in her, whatever, her series that her therapist told her she probably should get off the internet and that she, it, the internet's bad for her. She said that she said the internet is bad for me. And I'm like, listen to yourself. Then it's time to put all this to rest. Dragging up all this old shit is so toxic for everyone. You're dragging for everyone else reason? into it. To, to prove that she, I don't know. But like, you're something. not really going to prove anything. There's no. nothing that you can no. put out that is going to make all of a sudden everyone go, oh, well, shit, <laughs> I guess I was wrong the whole time. So, like, that's not how it fucking works. People no. are stubborn. People are going to, why are you doing this? Everyone has what? an opinion. You're not exactly. going to win. You're like, not winning anything. If you're here to be an artist and be a rock star, which seems to be her plan, mm -hmm. then make the rock music because you're wasting too much time on this drama series, girl. I agree. Like, no, I go agree. write a song, do something like, positive with yeah. your time this is just fucking draining for everybody mm -hmm. it's not it's just like at some point it's just to me becoming funny it's just so stupid well, now that it's, it's like, like when you put something out and then someone reports on it and someone else reports on it and someone else reports on it and someone else reports on it then it's like a game of telephone <laughs> and what was actually the truth and what's being spewed yeah. now is so far from the what actually happened so it's like mm -hmm. what is the fucking point here i still don't it's like so annoying to me and it's filling our heads with other people's problems and anxiety that we shouldn't even like shouldn't even no. be on our brains you know? But you guys really wanted us to talk about it. No, I know. And it's like, obviously, we could completely yeah. disconnect from this. Right. But it is kind of our job. And I always like to stay involved in the YouTube community and world. I've just been in it for so long that it's like, it would feel weird for me to not know what's going on. No, I, I somewhat agree with that for sure. Yeah. Like, YouTube is a total world. And you guys who are watching, you probably get it, you know? Like, yeah. and if some, you get it, you get it. Yeah, exactly. So... And I love YouTube. It's such a fun and cool community as like a whole, but I feel like it's just being kind of yeah. like poisoned lately in the sense, which sucks. It has been. I mean, 
And that, doesn't that happen to everything eventually? True. Mm, honestly, true. Jeez. Welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Oh, God. Dude, <laughs> have a look around. Bo really fucked with my brain. Oh, yeah. Can we night. talk about this? I wanted, I don't want to talk about Gabby Han anymore. Okay. Actually, she's connected to Bo Burnham. Did what? you know that? I didn't know that. She apparently stalked him oh. when, like a long time ago and like took a picture with him at a concert, was pretending he was her boyfriend. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking random. Yeah. And so in the in Bo Burnham special, you know, he drew all over himself yeah. for the white woman Instagram yeah. song. Yeah. That was to Gabby because she did that same she thing. She did. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah, Bo Burnham is a fucking creative genius. Creative genius. Which I oh, didn't even know who he was until artist. literally last night when I watched the thing. Dude, I've been telling Janelle, like, you've got to watch this. You've got to watch this because my sister's been telling me to watch it for like weeks now. And I wasn't mentally like ready because it's no, a deep I thing. didn't know what it was. I had no idea what I was like. It's some oh, yeah. comedy thing, but he made it. By it's like a musical comedy. He films it all in his home. By himself. And he does all the lighting, all the cuts. And I was saying to Janelle earlier, I feel like we have so much more of an appreciation and understanding for that, making content out of our oh, homes, yeah. figuring out our lighting, figuring out our cameras. Yeah, and his is like on a uh, fucking yeah. unreal level. Not that we're Bo Burnham. Yeah. You know what? I just feel <laughs> I like I kind of <laughs> appreciate it more no. because I know how fucking hard it is totally. to get. And oh, he like transformed his house throughout the whole thing. Yeah. In this it one room, he so comes in one good. little room. And he lives yep. in, I think it looked like, I don't know if it was a trailer, or just like a long apartment, but it's like, it looks like one studio apartment, mm -hmm. maybe or something like that. Or maybe only showed certain rooms. Yeah. I'm not sure. But anyways, it was small and yeah. the stuff, the, the visuals he was able to pull off with just one room was like unbelievable. He, and he's the one working the lights and he's the one working the sounds yeah. like doing it all. I was watching him like do stuff with his feet and like press different buttons. I was like, this motherfucker is crazy. And then edit it all together in this like one cinematic, like hilarious, depressing, funny, sad, like every emotion you could possibly feel yeah. all at once. But so beautifully done yeah. and like in a way that didn't make you feel too drained after yeah. like, I know that a lot of people with mental illness or just depression, anxiety, any anything like that could really relate to a lot of what he was saying. Yeah. Like I felt so heard yes. throughout I think, it. Honestly, because a lot of it had to do with the pandemic and like what life has been like. Well, it be, starts at the beginning of the pandemic right. if you haven't seen it yet. So the whole it's called Inside and he's inside the whole year filming this project yeah and it's just it's it's phenomenal wild. and i think it really encapsulates what so many of us have gone through in this time of the pandemic i mean mm -hmm. i was telling kendall like no one ex except for the people who have been through it right now like no one else is going to relate to that. like our no. kids don't understand that like no. it's this weird thing that only oh, before your time the only people like every hundred years <laughs> experience or something or what it, yeah like maybe let's hope because that wasn't the last one in like 1912 or something like that yeah but i mean it can happen at any fucking time <laughs> it absolutely can and i know but it is like such a it's still a very odd and like rare thing for our time yeah, no life, totally it was a know? huge part of our culture yeah it changed and, the world yeah so a lot of his songs in there are about that about being inside about being afraid of human connection and then just like what it does to him like at the beginning he's seems like he's at a much better mental state. And then yeah. towards the end, he just like kind of falls into this depression, mm -hmm. but he, he like shows it and explains his feelings in such a beautiful, beautiful way. And also just hilarious. hilarious like too. Oh, I can't even figure out what my favorite song is. I've now watched it three times. I watched <laughs> it again last night and I just kept rewinding ones that I love. <laughs> me and Josh are so into it. We can sing the whole thing. I've been playing it on my Spotify in my car. <laughs> no, I am such a fan of Bo Burnham. He's after got this. some hits for sure. Oh, the fact that he like made he Jeffrey Bezos wrote. He, there's like tons of songs in this fucking document. It's like a <laughs> musical. Yeah, he wrote a musical comedy, almost not a thriller, but like a drama. I would mm -hmm. say all in one. Yep. What and and also related to just I think the millennial generation a lot yes. and kind of what we're going through, how the internet has affected us and. <sighs> Dude. Yeah, that really got me. The whole welcome to the internet. A little of everything. I was like, oh yeah, a little bit of everything. It's so true. All of the time. It's crazy. <laughs> I fucking love it though. I, it's, it is so true. Very <laughs> relatable how he put, I mean, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he would like, the way he was, you know, if you look at the actual visuals and like the set and the way he put his lighting and the way he was doing clips and like. Yeah. 
there's just so many layers to it and mm-hmm. i just i'm sure i only caught a little bit of it only watching it once but even yeah. then my brain for like an entire hour and a half was like whoa it's like boom 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 yeah you almost wild. have to like take a break there's an intermission yeah. in it, and it's almost a good spot to pause it because then it gets a little more intense on the second half but yeah yeah it's i mean there's songs in it that are really fun and funny and then they'll just say something totally serious like mm-hmm. they'll drop the fbi killed martin luther king mm-hmm and it was it's like, it's just like, but it's like in the middle of a sock oh, puppet. Yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's so ironic. Yes. And, oh, and there's one of them that I really loved. White woman's Instagram. White woman. That one was Instagram. so fucking funny. It's oh so my God. Good. It's, it's so hilarious. Funny. It's hilarious. And also gets really sad at the end. Yes, I was like, it's also beautiful. Yeah. It's like it talk. It, yeah. It's like <laughs> kind of going over the classic joke of a white woman's Instagram, little pumpkins and pumpkin spice and like yeah. flowers and all whatever <laughs> quotes. Yeah. But then at the end, it's like kind of shows you a picture of this person who's just really trying to, you know, find validation and like how that's what Instagram is for so many of us is just wanting to present something that's worthy of Mm -hmm. our parents or our friends Mm -hmm. or Mm-hmm. you know it's just it's and i don't think really good. Sydney was like don't spoil it but no, i don't think we're spoiling it. like trust we're me not. you have to watch it to like yeah really understand there's if so anything much we're really to selling it. it yeah we're really selling it seriously go watch it <laughs> no it's, it's really good so but also like a little bit of a warning it does stir up some feelings so oh, if you're yeah. in a fragile spot just right health caution that's oh. such a good i think two weeks ago wouldn't have been good for me. right yeah <laughs> so you guys are right like it's so relatable and it does like stir up so many emotions that like i wasn't prepared to like yeah. right feel those things right before i got here <laughs> yeah i know i was like maybe we should have thrown it on right before that but yeah i mean i recommend watching it when you have some like some good downtime and yeah. you can really focus on it because yeah, it's not something we want to throw on in the background, no, like some deep. other comedy special. You want to see every yeah. single shot he has. Yes. I mean, it is a work of art. It yes. is a piece of art. Really I hope is. he wins some damn awards for this I shit because unbelievable. He sold this to Netflix, yeah. probably made millions off of it and did it all in his house. By himself. Some of the shots were so good. Unbelievable. Like the, the scene where he's like working out and sweating. Oh like my some God. of the shots were just so beautiful. And, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's all it's eyes amazing. on me. That's probably oh, my favorite song. I love that one because that like really Get like your fucking hands that really brought up. it I brought it home though. I was like, oh, it did. Damn. I was like sobbing and laughing all at <laughs> once. I was like, oh. it's wonderful. We it's, can't recommend it enough. I truly think it will hopefully leave you in a better place. I've heard that a lot of people with serious depression though have watched it and it made them feel better because it makes you feel seen for sure. It does. Because he goes through this hold yeah where you like you said he kind of starts off doing okay you know we all start off like oh this weird pandemic we're gonna stay inside like ha, okay stay inside and then we slowly i think all can relate to this point where we're like holy fuck i am not doing well like how did we get to this spot and i think he really portrays that in a very artistic and creative way that is but it's so versatile like any like i feel like everybody could relate to it no matter our covid story you know what i mean totally like right it's it's so it was so real Mm -hmm. Like looking back at it in hindsight and really yeah. reflecting on what we all went through and how transformative yes. 2020 really was. Absolutely. And it was validating in the sense of like, sometimes when I was watching his stuff, I would see something that was like so relatable to me. And I was like, wow. So I wasn't the only one feeling that way. And it made me feel like less guilty. Like, oh, yeah. a lot of people did really, this really affected like a lot of fucking people, obviously. But it's just nice to, again, feel that validation of like, mm-hmm. we were all in this together in a sense. Yes, yeah. we all experienced it differently of course and you know some some people it really took a toll more than on others but in a sense i feel like we can all find this common ground of what it was like to go through this yeah because what the, there's like nothing comparing what we went through yeah especially in the modern world right and we have this weird digital space we yeah. kind of were all living online in the digital space he talks about that a lot yes, too yeah um but yeah i thought he did such an excellent job about sp- I mean, speaking about mental health is so hard to do in no matter what form you're doing it, whether it's music or a podcast, sometimes you feel like you're just almost beating a dead horse. Like you're saying things that you're, are they really going to help people at the end Mm -hmm. of the day? We all try to be so open about mental health and we all have it, but the way that he put it was so different and unique and real Mm -hmm. that it didn't feel like just another spiel on mental health. Totally. You know, it just felt like meaningful and so deep like it was such a window into the depth of his mind yeah yes i got like a look inside of his brain which is a fucking wild place yeah and a genius place a genius beautiful place yeah 
Oh, Ken looks like a Bob Burns. I seriously, I am. I love him. I know he's great. It's so good. I'm gonna go watch it again tonight oh for sure. I'll be singing this song. I was singing him on the way home from the hair appointment today. <laughs> you guys like my hair, by the way? It's a little oh, shorter. Looks really good. It's very healthy now. I love it. Looks, it. it looks so beautiful. She it looks did a so great. Good. Thank job. you. Very voluminous. Yeah, my hair was <laughs> looking a little weird at the back. It, it this happens every time I wait too long to get a haircut. I get this like V shape where the front pieces break oh. and then just the end is long. So mm. it's like it's in the literally back, yeah. in a V. So she cut that shit off. <laughs> Got that shit right yeah. off. Yeah, it was real good. I feel healthier now. Haircuts make I feel me like a feel whole like, new person. That's like a true ass statement. Yeah. That and Bo Burnham <laughs> and time off the internet. Bo Burnham. I had a really good <sighs> healing weekend and Bo Burnham was part of that. Hell yeah. And now yeah. I'm back. Be back. <laughs> I'm feeling better. But that is going to be it for us today on the sesh and i just wanted to say since we are talking about mental health real fast that i know there's probably so many of you right now who are going through difficult times or you feel just the weight of everything or you're having that post-pandemic you know stress and anxiety that a lot of people are having i don't know really where i'm going with this and sometimes i lose my words when i talk about things like this but i just i truly want you guys to know who are out there who have been following our show for a long time just how much we really care about you, even though it's over the internet. Oh no, I really am going to cry. Don't I cry. <laughs> I just, I want people to know out there that if you do feel these things and that you're seriously not alone, that literally all four of us in this room have struggled with depression, anxiety. Some of us have had eating disorders. Like we know what it's like to go through times where you, you just feel like everything's falling apart or every every day feels dreadful or you don't have motivation to do anything and if you're going through one of those times right now that there is an end to that and that healing is this up and down battle and sometimes you kind of have to ride through those lows and just feel them and that's part of being a human it's part of your life experience is to feel the feels that's why we're here and as alone as it may feel and you may feel and as much as you may think like no one fucking knows what i'm going through like yeah people can be depressed but like you don't understand my my situation like there are people who do yes whether or not they're going through the same thing as you or not it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things like we all can relate to the fact of like going through tough shit and there are people who understand what you're going through and you are fucking worth it you are worth it to get yourself better yeah and you're and a worthy person you absolutely. i feel like so many so many of us have anxiety and depression just around the, the fact that we feel like we're not enough that we're never going to be good enough or that we're failing is devil and social media makes it no better oh it's so true it's so and toxic it, if and that if you've been feeling like that and you're on social media a lot get the fuck off because it really helps. And I've had to put major limits on myself as far as device time lately. Cause it was just getting, it's getting a little much, you know, mm -hmm. a little too much Gabby Hannah, mm -hmm. but I, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I just wanted to, to let you guys know that we care about you and we believe in Absolutely. you and you will be able to make it past darker times. And I can't even tell you how wonderful it, like, and how much it touches my heart Whenever I read comments about people being like, oh, I've had a really tough week and this show helps me like, oh, my God, I'm literally going to cry because that is just the coolest thing. Like if we yeah. can make one person feel better than they did before watching this, like that's all I fucking want. Right. Me too. Like, that's oh why we're here. That's why I watch people to connect with them. And the fact that you guys say that we bring that to you, it's like it can't even uh, describe how much I appreciate you guys. Truly, like you've changed my fucking life. So, yeah, you <laughs> Thank you. No, Jesus. you really have. Like, you really have, though. You guys I mean, have changed my life. The pants people, down. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry too. <laughs> like, wow, even this just like a turn for emotional. <sighs> just the past couple weeks, expressing like how I've been feeling and talking about anxiety, and sometimes you guys just—it's so both ways. Like, you get something from this, hopefully, and we get something from you, and totally. we really do. Like, a couple weeks ago, I was having a really hard time and Janelle sent me a screenshot of a comment with someone just saying that I'm stronger than my anxiety and just saying they believe in me. And it was it made it meant so much to me that I can't even put it into words. And we are so grateful to be able to get out here and say wh whatever we want and not feel judgment yeah. and feel safe. We love our audience. We love you guys. <laughs> we see it. We, we're not just saying that. No. And, 
I've always used to get annoyed when YouTubers would be like, I love you. Totally. Cause I'm like, we don't know them though. And it's like, you don't <laughs> and have I know to we know don't them. know you, but, but we like, we do, we feel like your vibe attracts your tribe. 100%. You guys are our vibe and we love you. I recognize so many of you guys on a weekly basis in the comments section and on Twitter and stuff. Like, I feel like you guys, I seriously feel like I've got like internet friends. I do too, too. That's how I, <laughs> I love this show because I get to sit down and just talk with my friends and then read the comments and it's so positive. So Truly, thank you for supporting this show. We know it's all over the place mm -hmm. and we never, you never know what you're going to fucking get here. But <laughs> thanks for being along for the ride and for supporting Janelle and I and yes. Kareli and Sydney too, because we've all gotten a lot from this show. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just, yeah, it's fun to watch us like grow in a way and mm -hmm. you guys grow with us and through the comments, just ha being so supportive of each other. Like they're so, everyone's oh, so supportive in the comments. It's like yeah. amazing. It's a great community. It's a fucking awesome community. And that's what I think like, yes, there's toxicity on YouTube, but like there's a lot of good shit. So there is, that is right. There's a lot of good shit that and there is, is right. more good shit than there is bad. I, I do believe that. And unfortunately a lot of times the bad over like shadows mm -hmm. the good, but I think there is, the internet, I think overall is a great place. Yeah, it's toxic. Yeah, it's scary. But like, it brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. It brings, it does. I'm talking Connection. to people overseas that I would have never gotten to connect with because oh, of this platform. You I've know what I mean? I've met so many friends, like subscribers who became friends. Yeah. People from all over the world. I mean, yeah, it's been the coolest. It's been the biggest <gasps> blessing in my damn life. I oh mean, I God. truly mean that. I, I can't even imagine where I'd fucking be without all of you guys. Yeah. I mean, reading those comments last week saying you guys have been watching since my makeup days. Like, so many of you I guys. I can't believe that. I'm like, why? But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? But thank I you. I really, truly, <laughs> from the bottom of my soul, appreciate that. And I thank you for sticking around all these years through all the ups and downs and still just being supportive and sending us endless love. Mm hmm. For we, real. we love you back. So we love you back. We're going to end on that note before we both just start sobbing, <sighs> sobbing and sobbing. I have oh, lashes man. on. I'm not about to fuck them up. Not right now. today. <laughs> not, that's what's great about lash extension. Cry all you want. Still got that your lashes. That is nice. God. <laughs> Still got your lashes. I should get eyelash extensions. Oh, okay. But that right, is going to be it for us today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the sesh. We will be back again next week. Maybe we'll play a game or something. Yeah. What should we, we do? We had a game plan for today, but we just rambled so much. Well, we just like time. a topic. Yeah. But I think maybe we'll bring it back. We yeah. want to do some Reddit, more stuff from Reddit because yeah. we know that you guys love it and so do we. Reddit's so. a good part of the internet, it's right? It's so great. I <laughs> mean, also a bad one. Also but a terrible you know, one, but also a hilarious balance. one. Everything that. in life is, has goods and bads. It's fucking true. All right. We will be back <laughs> next week on this sesh. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. But until then, keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.